Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. <laughs> it's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models will practically build Scare themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Welcome to today's show. Today we are going to do a little tutorial. I had um, a viewer who had mentioned that in building a KC-135 uh, in 70 second scale that some of the problems with putting on the, uh, the, the tires on the, uh, or the wheels I should say, on the landing gear struts and ask how it is that I do it. Well, I've done a lot of them. Uh, I used to build prolifically uh, with the KC-135 variants from Ertl. Um, I had all of them except for the R model. I made my own R model, but I didn't actually have the kit until now. But I had every variant, <laughs> excuse me, including the uh, the Takama plane. Um, I, I I did several, so I've had a lot of experience with these kind of landing gear. And today I thought I would show you how I do it. Now there's lots of different ways to do it. I'm just going to show you how I do it. I'm not hermetically sealing anything and you know making it all um, propped and, and, and staged and all that stuff I'm just I'm gonna do it and take you along with me for the ride okay the one thing I'm not gonna do is on these Ertl kits they have a lot of uh, seam lines of, or mold mold lines and in the interest of time I'm not gonna remove those from the landing gear because honestly these landing gear that I'm building for this tutorial, I'm not going to be using them because when I do my KC-135s, I do them uh, now. I'm going to be doing them gear up. So anyway, follow along with Mad Dog Merv if you want to learn how I do the landing gear on these, these multiple wheeled aircraft such as the KC-135. And there's a lot of others out there as well. Um, your 48 scale B29 has the two in the front that just you never seem to be able to get them to line up right. Well, I'll go over with you a couple of techniques on maybe how you can do that, but there is one little secret I use that really helps. So let's get to it. I have several of the KC 135 variants to choose from, but I'm going to pull the landing gear off of this one that we recently reviewed, and that's what we're going to use for this demo. So you can see here's the tires, wheels, and the landing gear. And I'm going to go ahead and get my paint. And I've decided that I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum 2X uh, semi-gloss white. I've decanned it, put it in my airbrush, and that's what I'm going to use to paint the centers of the wheels as well as the landing gear. And I've gone ahead and glued the tires together so they're they're ready to go. But this is how I do it. Okay, I'm ready to paint the, the tires uh, black. And I'm just gonna use some engine black from, uh, from Polyscale, the railroad color, because it's what I've got. <clears throat> uh, let's see, I need a good brush. Uh, we'll try this one to start with. And then what I like to do is I'll use either a toothpick, <coughs> excuse me, or I have a couple of old brushes that the, that the brush part's gone. So it's either just the wood or the, the metal piece here. But I want something that'll fit down inside this hole. So, you know, toothpick would work good too. Basically, this is going to be what holds my what holds my part while I paint. Okay, get a little put the visor down, and what I do, let's see if I can get you know, the way you guys can see me here, and 
and I just use the uh, holder as a way to rotate my tire. Let's slip just a little bit. Hold my brush there. Yes, there are masks you can buy. Yes, there are, you know, the, the circle shapes. Um, blah, 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 blah. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do. Here's how I do it. I like to paint. Um, I don't like to mask and whatnot. So this is, this is just how I do it. Okay, you can see how that's done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the other side. And then I'm going to get this edge here. I'm going to do that to all of these tires, and we'll be right back. Okay, so these are painted and dried. Um, <clears throat> the landing gear, uh, I took it off and put um, these, uh, I'm just going to call them shock absorbers, sorry, uh, into place here. And then what I did is I took my knife and I scraped off uh, paint from uh, the, oh, about halfway between here and the, and the shock absorber, okay, so that it's just, so that it's just plastic. Now, most guys would try whatever um, glue that they like to use and do it. To me, this is the important part here, okay? Um, if you don't use, uh, to me, as extra thin cement, then, um, well, it, it's gonna be, life is gonna be more difficult for you building models. Let's just put it that way. But I did a video a uh, year or so ago on something called sprue goo. And basically what sprue goo is, I don't have any, I don't have any of the plastic here. But when you remove parts from off of your sprue, for example. So you see these little round pieces here, okay, that are kind of extra to, uh, <laughs> to the part. They're just little teeny. They're just little teeny uh, pieces of sprue. And what I'll do is I'll collect those and then I'll put them in uh, usually about a half full bottle of, uh, to me, extra thin cement. And again, watch, watch the video and it'll kind of go over how I do it where it's a little bit more um, easier to understand the ratio because there's a certain ratio you want to get to and it's very unscientific. It's just kind of, you go by the look of things. Um, so here I'm gonna take my sprue goo. And to make this a little bit easier today, I'm not gonna use that brush, but I'm gonna use an old, nasty old brush. And you can see, you know what I've got there. I mean, it's obviously not runny. And I'm going to put some of that on my landing gear. Okay, these areas here. Yeah, and then I'm going to drop my brush like I always do. Wouldn't be a modeling session without me dropping something. Okay. Now, you do have a few minutes to work with this, but not a real long time. And I'm just going to put the tire on, and I'm going to twist it as I go, because it is a little bit of a tight fit on some of these. That helps the sprue goo, um, how can I put it? It doesn't bunch up as bad, if, if that's, uh, that's a good way to put it. And one more. 
twist and twist and twist. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I were to just use regular, a lot of different other glues, this this is going to slop off. This isn't going anywhere. This is going to stay here. But I can still move them. I can still adjust them. And so what I'm going to do, you can make a jig. I found with doing this method, I don't need to make a jig. All I need to do is put it down on something flat and then eyeball it. And make sure that I'm going to I'm going to look at it this way. Make sure that all four tires are on the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to make sure they're all perpendicular and well aligned and all that kind of fun hooey stuff. And it looks really good to me. So I'm going to put that one aside right there. Now, if I just used regular old Tamiya Ultra Thin Cement and put some on here, would it work? Yeah, it, it'll work. Okay, because it's it's a pretty tight hold with um, with the hole. I mean, it, it, it's pretty well engineered. Yes, that will work. Once this stuff, the uh, ultra thin cement flashes off, and it takes a little little bit longer to dry solid. But once it dries solid, all it leaves behind is the melted plastic. So. Yeah, it's kind of like with the ultra thin cement, you're melting just a little bit of the plastic, putting your tire rim on. Okay, but with this, you've got more melted plastic. I mean, it's a it's a, a big weld, you know. So, um, yeah, you can see I can turn those still. You did notice that I didn't do this. I didn't put the part on. And then hit it with the ultra thin cement. That's not how I roll. That's for me a recipe for disaster. I'm gonna use the sprue goo here. And I'm not gooping a ton of it on, I'm just putting enough to do the job. And if I feel like I've got too much somewhere, then what I'll do is I'll take my, my brush and I'll get in there and I'll remove it the best I can. Now I'm gonna um, you know, take the time to line this back up. Make sure that it's sitting flat and it is. So one thing I hate is when I when I put something down and and three of the four um, wheels will be touching and the other one won't. <laughs> this one's a little bit this one's a little bit wobbly, believe it or not. Everything seems to be touching, but I can bend them in or out just a little bit if I need to. And when this dries it and, and, and cures, it's not going anywhere. I mean, I've welded the plastic together, literally, with plastic. And it sets up pretty quick. Um, yeah, I could pull this off, but I don't want to, but I could pull this off, but... Um, another couple of minutes and this isn't coming off at all okay and lastly we'll do this one main gear uh, some models you might have to make a jig and when I say that what I would do is I'd take a flat piece of wood maybe some uh, strips of balsa or um, I'm gonna need balsa handy, darn it. But I do have some 
this, uh, some of this, and I could, you know, white glue this down into place so that it gives me my, you know, my alignment that I'm after. And then the same the other side and in the middle and what. Okay, so back to this. Um, these tires, these wheels, the hole is a little bit bigger. So I'm glad I'm using sprue goo. It'll hold it easier for me. You can see these 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 could be really, um, you know, really wonky if if I if I didn't do them straight. I'll push them into place, and then just I'm gonna eyeball it. I turn it around. Look, yeah, everything seems to be good. Because I use that sprue goo, I'm not going to have, you know, this isn't going to just sag while it's sitting here. It's on there pretty good already. And we'll put it there to dry. And that's it. That's, that's, how I, that's how I do these. The last thing that I would do is I'm going to go over it with a wash real quick. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Now, I don't want to leave my, my brush just sitting out here or it'll have welded glue in it. Or not glue, but uh, styrene in it. So this bottle here, I just put lacquer thinner in. I use it for all sorts of things. It's an empty bottle. And I'm going to use that lacquer thinner to clean out my brush so that I don't have any leftover sprue goo in it. Okay, for the last thing that I'm going to do here is, you can see these are in really good shape, but I am going to give them a wash. Now, with the Air Force aircraft, um, I really don't need to because these things are kept nice and clean, but I do want them to stand out a bit. So I'm going to take this, it's called, I call it Larry's Bath Water, and I'll try to put a link in the description to the video. It's a video I did a few years back on a wash that I use, a pin wash that I use. And I have a black and I have a brown. Um, I'm going to go over it with the brown wash, excuse me. I know, oh my gosh, I'm ruining it. No, it'll be fine. Yes. Okay, so here is, I know, it looks a little much, but as, as it dries, it should be fine. And if I feel like I've got too much um, pigment, too much of the paint, then I can come back and add just a little bit of water. I usually don't have to do this with the brown, but or the black, but sometimes the brown uh, doesn't suit my taste, my eyeballs. Okay, we'll see how this turns out. down like that so it can dry properly because I don't want it to pool up in the in the, wheel, the bottom of the wheel. Okay, and then I'm just going to let it sit here and uh, dry for just a little bit. If I don't like it, okay, this this uh, wash that I use has uh, dish soap in it, a lot of dish soap. And if I don't like what I've got once it dries, I just take a damp Q-tip and basically clean it off. So 
All right, we'll take one last look at this. We'll come back and take one last look at it. But you can see, um, they're good and solid. Those aren't, those aren't going anywhere. Okay, and here's the finished product. Now you'll see where that wash just kind of accentuated some of the um, low spots here particularly down in here and same with the same with the wheels um, little openings there again if I want to um, diminish that effect I can either get like a damp q-tip and and get it off there or I can just use some water in a brush and go over it again and it will um, thin it out even more so, but you can see they turned out, turned out good and straight, how they're supposed to be. And they sit, they sit the way they're supposed to. They aren't going anywhere. They aren't going to break easy, that's for sure. So, anyway, there you go. I hope, uh, and again, this last this wash is something you can forego if you don't want to I just do it because I think it adds a little bit of um, depth and detail to the um, to the parts but you don't have to do it so but anyway there you go there's the finished product